Yo, what up? This is D-Night, and you're listening to the Pardon the Interaction podcast. My, oh, my, we've had so much going on. Uh, for starters, in case you missed it, we've got a new addition to the Par and Pie family, Tara Dublin. Make sure you go follow her on Twitter at Tara Dublin Rocks. Also, pick up a copy of her book while you're at it. Make, make her day, The Sound of Settling. A very fun and interesting read compared to the things we talk about on this podcast. <laughs> But yeah, we're heading toward the do or die time for the 2024 election. Go ahead and hit up JoeBiden.com. Get that man like a dollar a month or something. Help his campaign staff up and get prepared to try and save our democracy. And make sure to grab like one other person you know and tell them about the podcast. Make sure they subscribe and tune in every single week. We got a lot of things coming up for you this year. We need all the support that we can get. So if you do your part and help us grow our audience, we'll do our part and help elect Joe Biden in 2024 and save American democracy. And this is the Part of the Interaction Podcast. You know who's been real quiet? That is, Javonka. J- oh, yeah. Apparently she changed her name to um, Ivanka Kushner. She changed her name to Santos. <laughs> <laughs> <She's a scientist. laughs> One, two, three, four. You know, I thought about being gorilla on Mar-a-Lago, on Mar-a-Lago and like going down there, seeing if I could get in. I don't no, know. I please, just, no. I that shit is like up close. Uh, it's I'm a dump. Obsessed. It it looks trashy. It, like from a distance, it actually looks kind of nice. But once you start zooming in, it, it looks yeah. Like well, they ass. got the bed bugs and everything. I don't know. I was Ugh. trying to see if I could get Michael Flynn's Mike Flynn's number since Roger. No, nah, we can't be. Anymore. No, we not. No, we're not getting involved with the Flynn QAnon crazies. Uh, <laughs> but I still reach out to Roger, and I'm so nice, and I'm like, hey, Rog. <laughs> Because he hates the Santas and he used to give me so much stuff. Like he Here's what get- you do. Yeah, but the thing is, like, when Roger Stone gives you stuff, like, you don't even know how much of it is a lie. No. <laughs> no, but the thing is, like, when it comes to the Santas, Roger was totally on point. This was, what, what, a year and a half ago? Well, yeah. And I was like, do you think the Santas is going to run? He goes, oh, he's going to run. Yeah. There's make no mistake about that. He is running. Okay, well, one day we'll just do an episode on all the shit Roger Stone has That Roger Stone you. said. Yeah. I still have his text messages, so we'll yeah. go. We'll... That sounds like a plan. You know, if he's listening, he's not gonna he's not gonna answer you. Maybe you should give me his number and I'll start texting him. Oh, that sounds so good. Hi, no, I'm a young man. No, that's perfect, Carol. No, that is perfect. I'm a young I'm man. Gonna... I wanna fuck your wife. Or is it a different guy? I have a um, partner's number too. No, that's Roger Stone. But if anything, he would Me probably be more particularly interested in Lev? No, he's out. My services in that department. You don't listen to the spaces? Oh my God. Mario's spaces are insane. Like, and Lev is always in there. It's always Lev and fucking Seb Gorka of all. Yeah. Seb is always. <laughs> Yeah, no. Um, if you were trying to proposition, if you were trying to proposition Roger Stone's wife, it would help if you were a black man. Um, so I'm probably right. For I heard that. he's kind of gay. Uh, a I don't know. Happy Pride Month. I don't give a fuck. That's um, why I said I was a young man. And I don't give a fuck if he's gay, but I do give a fuck if you're trying to marginalize gay people because you're in the closet. That yeah. I don't like. That is very unfortunate when those things happen. That's not that's not cool. Yeah, it's fucking pride, yo. Yeah, right. First day of pride, bitches. <laughs> Let people be proud. Let people be proud of who they are. Exactly. And leave them the fuck alone, man. Quit. Absolutely. If you want to harass someone, harass Trump's lawyers. Oh wait, there's they're doing that themselves. <laughs> um speaking of which, there's trouble in paralegal paradise. Trouble in <laughs> paradise. Um <laughs> The Trump legal team tasked with defending the former president in the criminal investigation into his the classified documents that uh, we have just spent like an hour on. <laughs> Trouble in paralegal paradise. Yeah, you know Palatori is involved in that Cardillo story. I did. Well, you know what? He's going to come up shortly. Um, and I mean, I wish we had time Ooh. for the fucking Cardillo <laughs> story. Um, anyway, uh, his legal team has been embroiled in months of deep distrust. Uh, an interpersonal conflict. These internal tensions have now reached the boiling point, threatening the effectiveness of the legal defense as federal prosecutors near the conclusion of their inquiry. 
Yep. Uh, things are not going swell in the Trump legal team. If you've, if you've been unaware, we'll get to more details in just a moment. Making paralegals get paralegals. <laughs> <laughs> the turmoil within the legal team burst into the public eye when one of the top lawyers, and, and here it comes, Tim Parler Torre, suddenly resigned recently. And I, I believe we covered that in a previous episode. Uh, citing irreconcilable differences with Trump's senior advisor and in-house counsel, Boris Epstein, or whatever the fuck his name. No, no, one, no relation to um, Epstein. Yeah, this no is one can, Epstein. Well, Ep- Epstein, whatever the fuck his name no, is. I'm no, I'm sorry, one, it's still pronounced Epstein. Uh, okay. No one can get along with this individual. Yeah, well, apparently. you're Jewish, Carol, so you, <laughs> you, you tell us. Do so I know how to say all the names? Yeah, um, we just assume you, that if they, it you has a complicated... Epstein, yeah. I, that doesn't. Steen, Russian, Stein, Russian, I guess. Steins, yeah, or Polish. Like I just, you know, no, like, that's not a Polish name. No. Anyway, no, no, I don't think. Yeah, it doesn't look Polish to me. All right, we're doing the thing where you were like, ask a Jewish girl. Um, let's stop doing that. <laughs> ask a Jew. However, Parla, Parla, new segment on Twitter. Okay, so we have our segment: ask a Jew and then ask a ask a Negro. Yeah, ask my black ass. However, Parla Torre's <laughs> departure and the culmination of the long simmering tension uh, that the tensions that continue to plague the legal team at a critical juncture. These ongoing conflicts remain largely unresolved, further undermining their collective efforts. And I think I've talked about this regularly, at least on the Twitter, where I'm like, just charge Trump, 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 just charge Trump with literally anything because his lawyers are so fucking incompetent that they'll accidentally get him 20 extra years in prison. You know, well, you know, the only lawyer that that did well was what was the one who got the three million dollars up front? You know what? I there's been so many lawyers, I can't even. What? Chris Kais, yeah, that guy. Yeah, yep. He got it. They have to get a that fucking what is it? Her, no, not Harina. What is her name? Helena. Alina Baba and no, Christina Alina Baba. Haba. I still get them confused. Uh, once you see a picture of them side by side enough times, you kind of figure out which one is which because one looks slightly more American and one looks slightly more European. Alina um, Baba who- Haba. Ba-ba-ba-ba. But yeah, anyway, Chris Kyes, he got his three million and tr- and Trump didn't even have to pay him out of his pocket. He paid him out of the Save America pack, which is out of the Save America pack money. Oh god. Investigation. But uh, Chris doesn't Chris doesn't care. He got his he got his money. He yeah, he made his three mil and was like, I'm out of here, homie. Peace <laughs> out. Um yeah, anyway, the homie animosity did that and nobody else did. He was like, mm, yeah, okay, give me that. And he <laughs> He was so smooth, man. I I I commend him for that. That's what I'm going to do when I decide to be a lawyer. Okay. Um. So Trump did actually have one. Um. <laughs> there was one lawyer who represented him in the Mueller probe. Was it? I think it was John Dowd was probably the most competent. He was the one who recommended Trump uh, cooperate as much as possible with the. Mueller probe. I don't know. Anyway, not important. On to, on to the dead? turmoil with the no. He's alive. On to the <laughs> turmoil with the current legal team. Uh, the animosity between the lawyers is centered on mutual distrust and a growing hostility toward Epstein. Uh, and, and it's totally understandable. He, you know how like in the Department of Justice when Trump was in office and they were talking about like Team Normal versus Team Insanity. Epstein. Stain is probably, he was the team insanity. Well, he wasn't on team insanity, but he is mirroring that in this particular instance. That um, he's ma- insane. <laughs> yeah, many lawyers no. on the on the team perceive him as an impediment due to his oversight of the legal work and his control over direct access to Trump. Uh, the clash between the lawyers became so severe that they even contemplated a quote murder suicide pact, agreeing that if one lawyer, namely Parla Torre, was fired. Others will resign in solidarity. Solidarity. Well, Paul whoa, whoa, whoa. So. Wait, murder, suicide. What the yeah. Hell? Well, this is the thing, right? It's it's like with um when Trump tried to install <laughs> Jeffrey Clark and DOJ, and everybody was like, "If you okay. do this shit, we out of here." Well, Trump's legal team in this case was like, "If Paul Torre gets fired, we out of here." 
Uh, no, Jesse probably, Clark, that whole that whole thing was. We will have to get to that another time. We don't have time. <laughs> that don't we? It'll, 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 yes, we don't. We, there's no way. We. Oh we my just, god! It's I a whole podcast. I forgot about that looted tick, man. Yeah, Jeffrey Clark is a. Man, he's insane. And they were like, you know, if we if there's an oil spill, we'll call you. Um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Moreover, they resorted to withholding information from co counsel suspected of briefing Epstein, um, exacerbated the discord within the team. So I just <laughs> the lawyers are lying to each other, they're fighting yeah. each other. They're like, if this dude goes, we all out of here. And it's just like a complete and total chaos. This is actually how he runs. The, he was running the White House, but, right? But Pal- you know, Palatory isn't as much of a lunatic as, as Corcoran. Corcoran no, is just no, Palatore, his- it seems like one of the few legitimately competent lawyers on Trump's team. He, he, he realized, I think he thought maybe at first, like, yeah, I'm going to do this. And then he was like, oh. Hell no. After okay. he realized at, at how the time, insane everybody was. Well, at the okay, so this podcast probably won't be out until tomorrow night at best. So, and by that time, I do believe he'll have appeared on MSNBC. But anyway, we'll Ooh. we'll we'll get to some of this. Um, is he going on Maddow or Nicole? Uh, Ari Melber, I believe. Any, we'll we'll, oh, we'll okay. get to I like this. Ari. Ari's yes, good. my guy. Um, anyway. As multiple Trump lawyers face their own criminal investigations, <laughs> including Epstein's yeah. recent interview, Epstein's recent interview with the special counsel and testimonies. Make attorneys from, get attorneys. Yeah, I know. Right. Uh, <laughs> and testimonies from Parla Torre, which he said was supposedly um, not responsive to a subpoena. It was voluntary. And Evan Corcoran, who got crime fraud exceptioned. Um, they testified mm-hmm. to the grand jury, the distrust and conflict among legal team members has escalated. I'm sure they're accusing is, you know how, um, so in the Russia investigation, in Mueller's investigation, there were cooperating witnesses that we did. We didn't know about until like long yeah. after. Yep. Right. So it, it, the legal team is probably like accusing the other lawyers of being cooperating witnesses. Cause they <laughs> fucked this up. So, so badly. Um, some lawyers have come to believe that these internal divisions pose a greater obstacle to Trump's defense than the risk of individual lawyers prosec- I mean, cooperating with prosecutors. They think that the strife in the legal team is more dangerous than if one of them flipped on Trump. That's that just highlights how insane this must be. On a day all the basis. trustees make an appearance. <laughs> it's insane. It's Just, just bananas. How many lawyers? Like, I, okay, so we got. He's, he's got. A, no, we're not doing. No, we're not listening oh. them out. With that's that's a game we're going to lose because there's too this many is of insane, them. Because it's not like it's one thing if it's like a firm. You know what I mean? Because yeah. you're gonna have. I can't keep track of who quit. I can't keep track of who. They are all over. <gasps> Oh, damn. This is sidebar. Guys, Go. did you hear Med Medvedev, the Russian minister? He said that Lindsey Graham should be assassinated. Uh, I yeah. just I had to throw that out there because that shit was wild Didn't to me. I, mean, issue- I knew that he put the warrant out or Putin put the warrant out for his arrest, but he was like, he needs to be murdered. All like, right. Murdered. Why specifically Lindsey Graham? Okay, so what happened was is Lindsey Graham was on TV talking about the best money the United States was had ever spent <laughs> was on Ukraine and supporting their war against Russia. He was like Russian soldiers are dying, best money oh, we ever spent. Oh, didn't he call for the assassination of Putin as well? Uh, I don't think oh, he is that he? bold. I don't I don't seem to No, Lindsey's too much of a fucking squish. Like he's too much of a squish. You really know how to call them. Yeah. There's a bunch of. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah. And so Putin's response was to issue a warrant for Graham's arrest. <laughs> and then to have like. Hang Lindsey Graham kind of thing. So, And I feel like that was actually very bold of Lindsey Graham, because if he's been engaging in any activities that were potentially. Is, is he on the. Um, is it the defense or he's on one of the committees? Because I'm like, why would he have been in Kiev? Oh but, my God. I just, I, I don't know. Appropriations or no, it maybe I don't know. He's on some subcommittee dealing with armed services. I, I don't, I, it's, I don't, I don't know why the, that just came to my head. So okay. Graham, Graham only, it's just an allusion to 
to assassinating him. He he early in March 2022 tweeted, "Is there a Brutus in Russia? Is oh. there a more successful t- Colonel Stauffenberg in Ru- in the Russian military?" Well, that's not. He's not alluding that it should happen. Like that's it's absolutely plausible that there are people in in the Kremlin right now plotting on how to get rid of Putin. Anyway, I, and then he goes on. The only way this ends is for someone in Russia to take this guy out. You would be doing your country and the world a great service. Ooh. Damn. Did I write that tweet? That Ooh. might have been me. Okay. Um, well, then that's, that's, that confirms it. So that makes sense. <laughs> well, the, All right. Lady, so Lady, Lance, Lady Lance is trying to grab Putin by the pussy. No, nah, okay? he ain't that gangster. Uh, yeah, all right. So I, so I'm tangent over back to the legal strife or the strife with the legal team yes. at, at the Mar-a-Lago. Uh, despite Parlatore's resignation, the legal team remains confident. I mean, the, I don't know. I just look, take this with a grain of salt when I say they remain confident that Parlatore will not flip on Trump. Like no one's confident of that whatsoever. I assume that that means they're actually I mean, shaking in their boots. He's got some ethical things still because that was his client. If, if he gets so, crime fraud accepted and he flips on Trump, like he it's he won't have a choice but to cooperate. Um, Parlatore previously testified to the grand jury stating that Trump gave him the freedom to search for any remaining documents at his properties. However, the failed attempt to remove Epstein from the case indicates that he retains Trump's trust and remains a significant figure within Trump's inner circle. That's Epstein. Um, mm. Parlatory <laughs> tried to get him the fuck out there, out of there, get him up out of the paint. But Trump was like, nah, that's my guy. Um, anyway, the origins of the animosity within the legal team can be tracked back to the FBI seizure of the documents in August last year. At the time, Trump's lawyers, including trustee Corcoran, Kais, and Halligan, which we actually don't bring up Halligan enough, uh, requested a special master to review the materials for privilege protections. Um, that whole disaster that ended up delaying the investigation for like a month. Uh, Halligan was key in that uh, with the with the judge shopping. Trusty, who played a prominent role in the proceedings as well, was already frustrated with the unfolding events. During a dinner at the Breakers Hotel in Palm Beach, Trusty expressed his frustration with Epstein. He resented having to consult his crazy ass on legal decisions as he did not consider him a trial lawyer and believed that <laughs> Epstein prioritized Trump's public relations over legal concerns. Well, that's why Trump trusts him so much. Like that's what Trump's what Trump wants his lawyers to do. Um, what would generally be in most people's best interest would be the mm-hmm. opposite of generally what Trump wants his lawyers to do, but for Trump, it seems to have been working. Um, and, and so that's why he continues to have his lawyers do in, insane, insane shit and make crazy representations in court. Anyway, Trump criticized rather trusty criticized Epstein for troubleshooting problems before they reached Trump, hindering direct communication between the lawyers and Trump himself. Trusty's dissatisfaction with extended to legal strategy and media management, expressing reservations about Chris Kaiser's approach and his reluctance to engage with certain publications. Um, the legal team faced a significant split when the Justice Department accused Trump of still possessing classified documents. Epstein and Kaiser were opposed to voluntary searches of Trump's properties, while Paula Torre and Trusty advocated for a proactive approach involving new searches. And I will go on a limb here and say Parlatore and Trusty probably had the idea with cooperating with the FBI, except for the fact that like Trump actually still retained more classified documents than was Trump. That sounds, you know, right. from just this, it sounds like they were kind of on the up and up, like we need to get in front of this. And we need to get... and Trusty, yeah, and Trusty yeah. yes, probably on the up and up. And then Kaz and Epstein were like, no, bro, there's actually more documents here, but no one's supposed to know that, right? Like, I, I'm sure they were trying to help Trump cover this shit up and Parlatore and Trusty, Trusty were not kept in the loop. Anyway, the disagreement further deepened the trust deficit among the lawyers. Although additional searches did pl- take place uh, and some of them uh, uh, not. <laughs> anyway, we just, you know, the feds executing the search warrant. Um Probably should have cooperated. I guess they didn't expect Garland to pull the trigger on that. Um, tensions escalated after that, and Paul Latore and Truste felt that Chris Kyes was portrayed as more cooperative with prosecutors than he actually was. Uh, and that's totally fair. Uh, Kyes was one of the individuals who was like trying to half ass cooperate, but I mean, we just, again, we don't have time to get into the. 
Kaiser's sudden withdrawal from a court of appeals argument solidified their decision to distance themselves from him. Kais departed from the team. The conflicts between Parlatore, Trusty, and Epstein intensified. They grew increasingly frustrated with the need to consult Epstein before speaking directly with Trump. And I totally understand that. You'd be like, I'm Trump's lawyer too. Like, let me talk to this motherfucker so I can get his head screwed on straight. And Epstein is back here, like, gassing Trump up to do crazy shit. Um, they even made a visit to Mar-a-Lago in an attempt to exclude Epstein from future deli- They tried to <laughs> in run Epstein, which I Epstein. totally get. Epstein. Apparently, it looks like he was a problem. He was the like one sticking point for all of them. Yes, this is very common with Trump. He has like a handful of people who he confides in, and they play gatekeeper, keeping the same people from giving Trump reasonable and sound advice. Although it remains unclear whether their concerns were adequately adequately resolved. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say, spoiler alert, they were not. Um, Parlatore and trust they also trust also began withholding information from Corcoran suspecting that he was briefing Epstein without their knowledge this is insane <laughs> it, it is Game of Thrones legal edition right? <laughs> this is wild this is wild I'm sorry look I, I made these notes but it was from a, okay and, and credit to Hugo Lau for the guardian for the sourcing on all of this this is just it, it was bananas when I was reading. I was like, this is wild. I've never seen anything like this happen in real life. Like, what is the red wedding? <laughs> what is it coming? Uh, it is a fucking dragon fight going to break out here pretty soon with some crazy some zombies. It is like, this is where all the drama, this is where all the good stuff was. Yeah, this is going on in the legal team. And I imagine this is probably what it was like in the in the Mueller investigation, too. We just didn't get enough leaks about what was going on with Trump's legal team at the time. Um, anyway, the personal, and this is, it just gets better from here. Uh, I'm sorry this, this segment's so long, but just bear with me. The personal conflicts within the legal team, Kara, you alive? Uh, the personal yeah. co- it's a lie. I know. I'm sorry. The personal conflicts within the legal team erupted publicly when rumors circulated about the suitability of parlatory and trustee in their roles. And this is great because these are the only two dudes trying to do the right thing and keep Trump out of trouble. And everyone's like pointing the fingers at them. They're the problem. Um, in response, the lawyer, the two lawyers agree that if one of them were fired and this is the suicide pact. Um, one the of them would were resign. fired, the other one would resign. The animosity escalated further when Paul Torre objected to the inclusion of Joe Takapina. Uh, you, from, you might be familiar with him from losing Trump millions of dollars in E. Jean Carroll's case. Indeed. Um, Senate passed the debt ceiling bill. Yeah, congratulations, Joe Biden. You fucking did it. Uh, Paul mm-hmm. Torre objected to the inclusion of Joe Takapina, a uh, celebrity lawyer he detested, and <laughs> rightfully so, in the team defending Trump. And as a matter of fact, Joe Takapina at the time of the FBI raid last year was like, Trump going to prison. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I saw the video. Google that. Uh, Paul Torre's misstep in uh, crafting a letter to Congress urging the Department of Justice to stand down in the investigation without giving Epstein advance notice, further fueled tensions and underscored the need for supervision within the mm. team. They're, they're a bunch of kids. It's like letting a bunch of 12 year olds. So what work did any of them actually do? Cause it well, just I mean, they were, they're all trying to do work, but they're all working against each other. Like it's insane. No one, no mm. one's in charge. It, par- Paula Torre is like, I'm trying to keep Trump out of prison and, and Epstein's like, I'm just trying to, you know, do make some Trump coin. <laughs> I think what Epstein is doing is trying to gas up Trump so that he can stay in his favor. He's, he's the yes man. Right. And that's, yeah. and that is one of the ways you make the most money grifting off of Trump is you just tell him whatever the fuck he wants to hear. Um, Ultimately, the breaking point leading to Parlatore's resignation came when his appearance discussing the letter on CNN was abruptly canceled. The decision maker behind the cancellation remains unclear, but I'm assuming this was probably Epstein going to Trump and be like, hey, you got to get this motherfucker off the air right now. Right now. And Trump was like, respect my authority. Uh, But the Trump 2024 campaign claimed it was due to Parlatore's criticism of Takapina during his previous CNN appearance that's a fucking lie um as this because look everyone's seen takapina at this point like joey phony soprano um as the special counsel investigation draws to a close parlatory informed trump of his departure the personal conflicts and the deep-seated distrust within trump's legal team has severely strained their ability to effectively effectively defend 
the former president. Now, you don't say they can't get on the same fucking page about literally anything. Uh, the, uh, and, and imagine what it'll be like when Trump is charged in this case and they have to put an amount of legal defense. They'll be doing this. Killing each other. Fight to the death. Who gets to represent Trump at trial? Uh, the unresolved interpersonal conflict centered around Epstein's role continue to undermine their collective efforts as federal prosecutors prepare potential criminal charges. And given what we've talked about on the podcast here the last couple of weeks, uh, charges are fucking imminent. And not like Georgia imminent where Fonnie Willis was like, oh, charges are coming. And then she kept uncovering crimes or like the lawyers obstructing the fucking investigation, not having offered her you know, her client clients, the plea deals that were on the table. No, this is just like, you know, keep your fucking news alerts on. Cause it could be any day now. Like I'm assuming weeks, it could be days. Who knows? Um, as the investigation nears its conclusion, the team faces a critical juncture where overcoming internal divisions may prove as challenging as the legal battle itself. Uh, I'm going to say actually this legal battle is going to be pretty fucking tough. But yeah, there's just endless insight into the the comings and goings of Trump's legal team and why everything seems to be such a disaster from the outside, because in in private, it is very much so. Whew, that was that was a tough one. <laughs> Thanks for saving me the most wordy of the segments i apologize for the extensive amount of notes i took on that but it's just i I, utterly fascinating utterly fascinating uh i i've always been one just to question the quality of trump's lawyers and i'm not not that i have any legal experience myself but we all know idiots when we see one carol you're a lawyer Are, are trump's lawyers fucking morons they seem to be except for the ones who quit sooner i mean anyone who would take the job because at the end of the day, everybody wants to be a fucking celebrity. That's all these people want. I mean, I, remember? I, wait, well, I don't know. If, I don't know if that's the case. Not all of them want to be celebrities. Some, of them, some just, of them for sure. I mean, yeah, you know, but some of them just want a paycheck. Said, Ooh, that Stormy Daniels shit is rough. He going to prison. Yeah. And then he's like, he's not going to prison. He did nothing wrong. It well, just it Takapina did the same thing with the documents. At every turn. Oh, but yes. I think that probably Palatori is one of the most normal of his attorneys. Like, I, I really do. Like, And I seemingly competent. Yeah. Yeah. And seemingly. Like, I, you know, I, I, mean, I don't know him personally and I make no illusions. of. I, how did these fuckers get out of law school? I, need to I, don't, understand. Th- I don't think they're. I don't think they're always like this, but I think part of the problem with working with Trump is like you have to keep him happy by doing the crazy shit that he wants. And then you just get like, but they just got caught up in shit, like just caught up and just fucking. Yeah. Well, at some point you realize, oh, damn, that I become an accessory to a crime here. Right. Well, yeah. <laughs> and then you, then you, yeah. And then you really get roped in. And you're like, fuck. I, Carol, I remember when I was having you. <laughs> I was asking you, like, what's the number one thing on every lawyer's itinerary when it comes to... Oh, and I said something besides don't get arrested, but the answer was don't get arrested. (laughs) Yes, yeah. I'm I'm assuming every um, criminal defense attorney, like, their number one goal in, in, in their profession... It's not money, you know, it's not fame. It's to stay out of jail. It's to stay out of jail. <laughs> and and then if you work for Trump, you're inevitably going to be involved in, in helping him further a crime. So the potential for going to jail goes up. But he's always crying. Yeah, that well, that's why Carol's like, you're fucking stupid for representing him in the first place. He's always so crying. Yeah. I mean, even Steve Bannon couldn't get a goddamn lawyer. Well, he got a lawyer. He just doesn't want to pay him. Well, no, but then he He's tried that Trump program. To they, they had quit or he had then they he was trying to get like other lawyers. And Carol, I'm the, sorry. These are the longest four segments in here. So I apologize. I'll let you tackle the last one and you can fly through this. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I've just been looking at Twitter, which was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't really been on Twitter all day. It was kind of nice. Uh, nothing good comes from looking uh, at Twitter, and this is someone who is term. <laughs> this is coming from someone who's terminally on Twitter. Uh, I'm like, God, I need to get off of this. How many followers you have? That's that's probably not the. <laughs> 
Well, that's the the that's the only good thing about Twitter is I follow so many people that I still get some of the good stuff still, and that's yeah. like fifty thousand people like funneling the good stuff towards me to like block out the bad. Anyway, uh, Carol. Yeah. So fi- final segment. Trump segment. tries to rid himself of a case of the Krebs. As part of the investigation into former President Donald J. Trump's attempts to undermine the 2020 election results, the special counsel, Jack Smith, has issued subpoenas to staff members from the Trump White House who may have been involved in the dismissal of Christopher Krebs, the government cybersecurity official. Hey, wait. See, and we've spent all this time the last couple of weeks talking about the documents case. You're like, well, damn, is January 6th investigation dead? Nope. Nope. Krebs had contradicted Trump's baseless claim of election fraud by affirming that the election was the most secure in American history. That did not make oh. Trump happy. He was no. very, I remember that. He was very irate. With no tell ba- no tell man baby no. <laughs> um, man baby sad. Man baby smash country. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, I, I for some reason I would always get like Krebs and Ray mixed up for some reason. Ray, I, oh, I you the FBI director? No. I mean, does Krebs look like him? I don't think. Well, maybe just because their names are Christopher. And they, oh, yeah, that's oh where yeah, duh, the Chris's. You're right. <laughs> duh, I'm stupid. Hey, I'm an idiot. I was like, what the fuck do they have in common? They have the same name, moron. You're the, <laughs> I'm stupid. Hey, man, that was all I need. I, I think that's all Trump needs to, like... <laughs> special hey, agent well you you, jo- you joke about that but how many times did trump call crabs and be like chris i need you to get the fbi off my case because <laughs> he doesn't know which chris is which all right carol continue i'm sorry special agent jack smith team is particularly interested in understanding the events leading up to krebs's firing and mm. examining trump's state of mind during that time so yeah um like the investigators aim to establish a timeline of events that may shed light on the attack on the Capitol by a pro-Trump mob on January 6, 2021. If you're not familiar with that pro-Trump mob, a lot of them just recently got convicted of seditious conspiracy. If not, you know, oh, files so uh, all of them motherfuckers are going to jail. Like we're we're up in the in like over one thousand. You about wow. to lose your it's freedom. over 1,000. It, the number of people going to prison. Freedom. Yeah, anyway, continue, Carol. <laughs> the recent subpoena is issued approximately two weeks ago, targeted officials in the presidential personnel office, according to individuals familiar with the matter. So it, it's. Uh, I was going to say something really terrible right now, but I'm going to keep it to myself because I don't want to go to jail. Carol, continue. You're going to keep it to herself. Oh, I was just thinking. Uh, Yes, that would help establish a timeline because if they can prove that, you know, he uh, believed Chris or whatever, or this weighed into his, I don't know. I can't think too good, but I agree (laughs) that it helps establish his state of mind. Let's see if it comes out more clearly. Krebs has drawn Trump's ire when his agency, the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, released a statement asserting that the integrity of the election results and debunking the unfounded conspiracy theories about compromised voting machines. The statement unequivocally stated that there was no evidence of any deleted or changed votes or any compromise in the voting systems. Just five days after the release of Krebs' statement, Trump took to Twitter to announce Krebs' termination. (laughs) The proper way of firing a government official. Claiming yeah, that his statement glad, was, yeah. I was going to point it out if you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> claiming that his statement was, quote, highly inaccurate. <laughs> Krebs later testified before the House Special Committee investigating the January 6th attack, revealing that there had been skepticism among Trump's allies regarding his loyalty to the president. Yeah, this is, that's what happens did when Ray, you tell the truth did in Ray public. testify too? Did Ray testify too? I can't remember. There was so much testimony. Was uh, so to much. the grand jury? I don't I don't know about that, but he did testify before Congress. Anyway. For the um, January 6th committee. Well, okay. Part of the reason why investigators investigators are looking to this is like if you have someone in the government telling the obvious truth that the 2020 election was not rigged and Trump just lost, and well, that individual discredits anything that Trump says that he used to like further <laughs> But literally um, everybody said it. Yeah, from Bill well, Barr to 
Right, and then everyone who he was said like, "This is bullshit." Well, every you you may or may not have noticed this, but everyone who was telling the truth was either fired or left before January sixth. They had to get up out of there, and Trump was trying to replace all these people with, with individuals who were willing to lie. With, for instance, like Jeffrey, Jeffrey Clark. Clark. Ah, Jinx. <laughs> See if there are any more parking attorneys or environmental <laughs> lawyers available. All right, Carol, continue. I'm gonna hire the parking lot lady (laughs) she's hot okay within the presidential personnel office happy pride month carol (laughs) a small group of trump loyalists led by john mcinty is that how you pronounce it yeah mcinty forgot about him. john mcinty trump's former personal aide sought to identify and dismiss individuals they deemed disloyal to trump within the federal bureaucracy this is bearing Mm. a lot of resemblance to his legal team yeah (laughs) They specifically targeted Krebs, highlighting various reasons to distrust him, including in a social media post by his wife featuring the, quote, Biden-Harris logo. These efforts by personnel office to test the loyalty of federal officials and potential hires are being investigated by Smith's team. I mean, yeah, this is the same person who demanded team. a loath of loyalty. What did I, oh, did I say loath of loyalty? What no. The English, I don't think so. Bro. But that's of loyalty. That's sitting though. Do you look from... tan, Carol? I've been outside a lot. You tan for me. I'm it trying to rosy in the cheeks. Happy Pride Month, Ty. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is the same individual who demanded a loaf of loyalty. <laughs> I did it again. Loaf of loyalty. I it it's too late. It, I, I would like a loaf you know of loyalty as loaf well. Loaf of loyalty. <laughs> it is fitting for this bunch. <laughs> a loaf of loyalty. <laughs> <laughs> because they are loathsome. <laughs> the loath of loyalty. I kind of like that. We should make a shirt. He asked for a oath and oath of loyalty from his FBI director upon taking control of the government in 2017. So it's no surprising. It's not surprising that upon leaving office in, in an attempt to maintain power, he's like testing the loyalty of the people who were working for him for the things to come. And I imagine that that's why Smith's investigating um, this particular incident. Anyway, Carol, I'm sorry, I continue. The investigators are also examining the interactions between the personnel office and the Justice Department as Trump sought to utilize his bureaucracy to challenge the election outcome. Heidi Stirrup, a loyalist close to Trump's policy advisor, Stephen Miller, (laughs) Served as the White House liaison at the Justice Department and oh, is an interest to Smith's team. Uh, it Stirrup. gets really it gets really oh. interesting here. Continue. Just just go. Stirrup was banned from the department after attempting to gather sensitive inf- information about election fraud investigations. Huh. 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 <laughs> so there were still enough people at the Justice Department to uh well we know that already. It was to, like it's this bitch out of here. Yes. Yes. Look at Bill Barr. He was trash when he worked for fucking HW and uh, whatever. Go ahead. They were always all trash. During this period, Attorney General Bill Barr, who had been seen as an ally by Trump, resigned after declaring that Trump's election fraud theories were baseless. Oh, Jeffrey. Now, I'm on operating under the assumption, and this is reckless speculation here, uh, that Trump was asking Barr to crime. And and he was like, uh, well, you lost, so I'm out. Um, <laughs> yeah, basically, he well, saw the writing on the wall. Yeah, no, I'm Bill I'm talking. Is nothing if not shrewd. That's why he's been around for so long. Why he's oh, been yeah. operative for so fucking long. He been on. Well, you brought up his stint in the Bush administration. He be on. He been Bush on the CY one. Yeah, the you first know? Bush. Like, he been on the CYA program. That's cover your ass for yeah. forty years now. Jeffrey Rosen, Barr's successor, also refused to carry out Trump's orders to use the Justice Department to overturn the election. Oh, in contrast, Jeffrey B. Clark, he's like, let me go down the line of Jeffreys, uh, the acting head of the Civil Division. <laughs> Who was the first one? Jeff Sessions? Was, was he the? Yeah, he was, because he got ran out yeah. on a rail. Mm-hmm. Uh, the acting head of the Civil Division embraced Trump's efforts to overturn the election and became a key ally in Trump's eyes. Clark's involvement in assisting Trump's attempt to reverse the election outcome has drawn attention of investigators. And we've talked about this quite a bit in the previous, in the coverage of the hearings. 
Um, the subpoenas issued to Trump's White House aides and the ongoing investigation into the firing of Christopher Krebs shed light on the extent of Trump's actions to challenge the election results and his mindset during that time, which was fucking crazy and evil and willing to do just whatever and ignore anyone who was not um, a yes man. As the investigation progresses, it will likely provide further insights into the events leading up to the Capitol attack and the actions taken within the Trump administration. Fuck yeah, it will. <laughs> but like, don't we kind of know? We just need it to be like, we just need evidence of whatever. Like we all, I'm sure it'll still end up being like both the same and worse than what we thought. Yes, exactly. Yeah. You nailed well, it. That makes sense. The shit that we've learned like over the last year has been wild. Absolutely fucking like, bonkers. And if you listen to this podcast, we're, yeah, we've been mesmerized. The amount of planning and the amount of just scamming and criming that was going on behind the scenes, it was more detailed than, and, and with the former guy being the dumbass that he is and then surrounding himself with fellow dumbasses. The fact that it was able to go this far and was this intricate, it's frightening because imagine what somebody who's actually smart, like if a Bill Barr had been on board. Right. You know, we had the Giuliani's and the fucking trustees and the and damn Jeff, Jeffrey Clark's and, and John Eastman's all like literally the dumbest people on the planet. But if a Bill Barr had been an orchestrator and been involved Things could have gone vastly fucking different. Right. You know, they could have gone vastly, vastly different. Like and it, we it, don't even we don't even talk about the fake elector plot anymore. This is just gone like right? that's, that's poof going to the wind. I, they're still investigating that. Good God in Michigan, in Michigan. And these people are still Arizona, at it because they're not Wisconsin, in jail. I don't know what the fuck Mary Garland is doing. Whoa. I think that- they are building a case. I okay, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. okay. I, I I I I get that, but I still I feel like she Garland, means that she wants to add him to the rotation, and he hasn't called her yet. Yes, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think I have. To, we have to celebrate. I feel pride. like happy straight pride or whatever. I, in that, we're one. we're proud to love whoever we love. Okay, you just want things to move faster. You want them to wrap it up. Um, well, that's I, because I realize the gravity of things at this point. And I also know, as Christopher reminded me, my son, Christopher, not one of them other Krebs or not, Ray. Not Krebs or Ray, yeah. Is that 2024 is six months away? Yeah, I know. We are it's running us. out of time. It seemed like we had a lot of time. When, Gar- when Garland was appointed, we were like, okay, yeah, he's going. But at this point, I feel like we have to move because everything is on the line. Well, we still got six months until like, you're like, damn, it's only six months till 2024, but also we still have six months until 2024. Um, And I know you want to get like, we talk about this, but like the scale of this is massive. Like not just in terms of like the you people at the bottom that. of the period, but look, the people, it's a lot of people. At the, they're getting there. All right. Look, time for a bit of reckless speculation. Cause I promised this earlier. Um, and, and this is like, okay. So one of the things, again, I know you want consequences for these people and you're like, damn, what's taking them so long? Um, I w- am willing to speculate recklessly. Reckless is speculation. Um, reckless. I do believe with the conviction of the Oath Keepers and the Proud Boys and a number of individuals in those groups cooperating with the FBI, um, I am willing to speculate that at this point, the FBI knows who the bomber was, who left the, the bombs up out of the DNC. I want her to go to jail. I, I, I don't know about that. Um, I, I'm fun to recklessly speculate. Well, I, well, this is reasonable <laughs> reckless speculation. God damn it! There's a happy medium. It's like the secret documents. It's in between. It's in between confidential and top secret. It's in the middle. Um, um. So there is some evidence to suggest that the Department of Justice, or rather the FBI, has tied the individual who left the pipe bombs outside of the DNC headquarters and the RNC headquarters on January 5th 
to a vehicle um, to which they were able to obtain the license plate numbers from. Where did you, where did you get this information? I just, just information yeah. to suggest this. Um, they were able, able to connect this individual to a vehicle and through surveillance footage in the area, they were able to get the numbers off the license plate, which means that they have a lead, right? But I'm sure the first thing they do in cross-checking um, the the information on that license plate, if the car wasn't stolen, does that individual who that car is registered to have any connection with the the um you know, the groups on the ground on January 6th, the militias, the Oath Keepers, the Three Percenters, uh, the Proud mm. Boys, so on and so forth, right? And it might be because that individual who is responsible for placing the bombs there is connected to those groups. That's why the information hasn't been made public yet, because they're working their way up the ladder to connect that person okay. with the Trump I don't know who it was, but I am pretty confident. It looks like it was a woman, just the gait and the build and the shape. Yeah. Or it was a tiny, tiny man. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. Uh, you, you could always... Which it, means it could be Ron DeSantis. With low quality, yeah, with low quality video, video He probably has an alibi. Are we talking about the pipe bomber? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, Ron DeSantis has an alibi? Is that that he was yeah. in Disney World? At, yeah, probably. Are we talking about the pipe bomber? That's what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. we're talking about the pipe bomber. I'm yeah, sure, I'm sure he has an alibi and wasn't in D.C. that day. Yeah, I'm sure he was at Disney World jerking off in the kids' bathroom. Um, Now, I, look, again, reckless speculation. <laughs> I can't prove that. Like, in anyone listening to this, like, just take I'm that with a grain of salt. I'm not saying that was the pipe bomber, okay? <laughs> so don't sue me. <laughs> I'm and not saying... I'm not saying that the pipe bomber was anyone But it was Casey. Note. <laughs> I, the leap I'm making is that the reason that I they're not identifying the pipe bomber yet is because there are like if they're able to tie the pipe bomber to the groups on the ground or the war room. Um, oh, where, well, where they had the two to they had. Yeah. And who was there? Uh, Christina Bob. Well, yeah, see, we're talk we talk about the individuals who were arrested on January 6th, right? And a lot of those people didn't actually necessarily plan in advance to storm the Capitol, although a number of them did. But the individual who placed the bombs on the January 5th, the night before, they had to know that the plan on January 6th was to rile up the mob and send them into the Capitol. The and the bombs were to distract law enforcement officials from, from what was going on on the cap Ooh. exactly and that is a that's a good reckless speculation d i like that one right so that individual would have to have some sense of what it was that trump was planning to do in advance and there's no way that that individual could have the presence of mind to put bombs outside of you know both of the high value yes high value targets to distract law enforcement unless they were like in direct communication with someone you Who know what? That makes a lot of sense because otherwise, if they had just put it in front of the DNC, that would have pointed to, but doing both, yeah, you really have no right, you know, it confuses things a bit and it and then also you you've split law enforcement and like now you've got to div you've you've divided law enforcement even further. Now they have to think about the capital and they have to think about the DNC and the RNC and like they might look at the bombs as more of a higher priority than what was at the time a seemingly quote unquote a protest gone yeah gotten out of hand. That yeah. Makes sense. Anyway, all right, that's enough regular speculation for the evening. It's getting late. Um. Time for Do you a, have an asshole shithole of the week uh, nominee? Well, Did we get one from uh, the Twitter? Uh, give me one second. So before we get to that, uh, I'd like to. I have just, a standing shithole of the week, and he keeps he keeps paying yeah. the bill. No, we're going to let you save that for your closing thoughts. Um, before <laughs> we get to the shithole of the week award, uh, I would just like a short moment for sports ball minute of the week. Jimmy fucking Butler, sports ball minute of the week over. <laughs> Um, we have <laughs> Carol's like, what the fuck are you even talking about? Uh, if you if you if you're if you're a sports ball fan, you know. Um, so we've got 
We've got a number of potential nominees for the Shithole of the Week Award. I'll go down the list. Um, thank you, everyone on Twitter who responded to the tweet um, asking for nominees. Veronica uh, recommended well, that is at Veronica or at Veronic 314-91223. You need to edit that handle and make that more um, manageable. Uh, she recommended uh, Matt Gates and Lauren Bur- Bobert um, for trying to tank the debt ceiling, which was insane because I don't even think Bobert voted <laughs> after trying to lead the uh, lead the cavalry against voting for the debt ceiling. So that was hilarious. Um, uh, radical old woman. Um, she's a favorite of mine. Love you girl. Um, not, not like that though. Um, she nominates MTG as in like empty G that's, that's Marjorie Taylor green. Those are all fair. Those are both fair. Um, mm-hmm. so at cast fool has nominated governor Gianforte of Montana. Oh, not only did he say no thanks to the free money for food for children, like the free food assistance program, he vetoed a $6 million um, homeless veterans cottage house program. So he fucked them whoa, kids whoa, whoa. and he, fucked he the kids. What? Yeah, he vetoed a $6 million homeless veterans cottage house program. And I was wow. assuming that was federal, federally funded. So it was free money. He said, fuck them kids and them vets. That's actually, we, we're just going to stop it right there. Montana, Montana's been doing the most lately. Like, really? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's insane. We'll have to. There's a lot. And we can they go into elected there. a black fucking mayor from Liberia. Shit happens. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna stop the nominee pro- nomination process right there and say Casful or at Casful. Give them a follow on the Twitter. Uh, congratulations, you have um, sufficiently nominated Governor Jean Forte of Montana for the shithole of the week award. Uh, I do yeah. hereby present him with that fucking trophy he can shove it up his ass fuck you guy (laughs) seriously (laughs) okay carol do you have any closing thoughts this evening oh this this is so weird i feel like i didn't realize this would happen again today (laughs) (laughs) every every time we record carol every time (laughs) i was i was looking into javanka who you're right she apparently does want to be called uh ivanka kushner Ivanka Kushner, she's the like, Trump brand. I is guess toxic. this name, yeah, the Kushners aren't aren't that great either. But um, <laughs> I guess going getting a divorce and saying she's a Democrat again isn't going to work for her. So, um, <laughs> so I guess I only got petty shit right now to say. And I was going to nominate Ken Paxton and fuck that guy. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> that is a good one. All right, that was my original uh, plan. It was my original nominee for the Shithole of the Week Award. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with Ken Paxton, we don't have enough time in this podcast to go down that rabbit hole. Look that up. But he was recently impeached by uh, Republicans. It, well, first of all, it's Texas Attorney General, State Attorney General, recently impeached by Republicans in Texas. So you know he had to do something seriously fucked up, and he I did. Trust me, he did. I need the tea, man. Okay, so he came out of the. Blue. I yesterday okay I'll, I'll give you the the brief rundown on why he's getting impeached specifically so he was criming in office his subordinates was like oh no nah, bitch we uh alerting law enforcement call the feds um and you know uh paxton um he basically retaliated against them ended up in a lawsuit uh and he tried to have the state of texas pay off his subordinates in order to get the lawsuit dropped and like the feds are already investigating if you recruit all of the Texas house state legislature into this scheme to pay off his subordinates, uh, like that's going to have the FBI looking at everybody in the state of Texas. And they was like, Oh no, we can't fucking have that, bro. You got to get the fuck up out of here. Um, that's, that's the short story of it. Um, off the top of my head, uh, just look into that further. <laughs> I'm sure we'll hear more story. soon. Um, and also one fun, one fun note of detail about uh, Ken Paxson is uh, one of the crimes he committed or uh, potential crimes, allegedly, because uh, pardon the insurrection is yet to be sued, uh, is that he uh, had one of his donors hire his mistress uh, with a oh. cush job where she didn't have to do any work so she could live closer to him because he didn't feel like driving an hour and a half to fuck. Um, this is... <laughs> Uh, one that of the- hawk face motherfucker like I can't even imagine somebody 
I wants to do anything with him. But he's been uh, under indictment money. for what seven, eight years. They've a long time. Protected. Yeah, we don't have. I just it's more than we can cover. It, it taking a whole episode of the podcast and probably in some. But like this is one of the allegations that he's being. This is one of the articles that he's it, being impeached for. Funny side note there, uh, his wife is a a Texas state senator, so she will be voting on whether or not to convict him in his impeachment. Did you read that article that I wrote a while back where his ass ran out the back door and hopped into a car that his wife was driving and sped away from a process server? Okay, yeah, (laughs) yes, I did read that. Maybe he can be the shithole next week. all but right. we'll probably find another shithole by then. There'll be lots of shitholes and there'll it be lots of time for them. See, I was, of course, going to nominate Ron DeSantis again because he always deserves it. But we'll give Ken the prize this week. No, no, we gave it to Montana. Oh, it's good. Okay, we got I it. I just, that was my closing thought is if that you, I was sort wondering, of paying attention. Oh, and well, well, if you were wondering about the quality of Ken Paxson's romantic and relationship decisions, his wife sang a song. Uh, about how she's a pistol packing mama and her husband <laughs> Suze Obama. Um, so that's what you have to look forward to in his. These people speech. are fucking nuts. It's fucking bananas. Um, all right. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, Carol. These Republicans you, are crazy. Not, not you, Carol. I'm, I'm sorry. You've you've given your. And I used to be one. So yes, I know. Yeah, we we just don't. We recommend you not share that information with anybody, especially not on this podcast. <laughs> Ty, do you have any closing thoughts this evening? Uh, go after your guy. Yes. That's that's your closing thoughts. Just wear his ass out for we like need a to minute. Stop. DeSantis, he is. I, I can't even. People. Well, he's going to stop himself, but yeah. I wish he would stop himself, but I'm going to leave that there, not elaborate. But <laughs> FBI, just don't come knocking. To the because. LGBTQ community and the children, it is obscene. It breaks my heart. It is so gross. Yes. And I just can't imagine. Like, I think about what Esther Bosch said when i when i spoke with her and she said that you know because she was what her 16th birthday when she was taken to auschwitz so unlike a kid who was like three or two she pretty much had a full life i mean people back then got married had kids at 16 years old so she had a full life and perspective to really contrast before and after and she said well yeah give give the people a little bit more the, background on the Esther. yellow stars and everything and she goes all of a sudden people were oh you're just a dirty jew and she's like yesterday i was clean today i'm dirty like what changed yes. that's esther, how I esther bosch noted holocaust survivor for any yes of you there, but any that's of you tuning in for the that's how i feel about this because i'm like I know some of you, you would go to the OP and the gay bars with me. I know that you would go to Pride and you would do these things. So now all of a sudden, these same people you've known and partied with and hung out with are groomers. And I always think about that. And it's the um, comparison to how quickly people can just throw away people that they've known their whole lives or most of some of their lives and who know as human beings and people are able to and how he's tapped into that awfulness that they carry with them. It just absolutely is just astonishing to me. And it's so incredibly painful because, you know, I got an LGBTQ kid, and my LGBTQ friends, and I, I really don't, Ron DeSantis can go fuck himself. I, I wish I, when I say fuck himself, it's something more violent, but um, that's that's what I would really like to see because he is a terrible human being and the joy that he takes in it. Um, my shithole of the week next week is going to be Moms for Liberty because I'm coming for those bitches. But Good call. Yes. <laughs> they deserve all the dead flowers, all the black roses. They love oh, those bitches. I hate them. hate them so much like i, I can't bitches. Them bitches. sing it carol i just <laughs> yeah i can't think of anything worse than like women who are trying to help us all uh i take away the protections women have earned and they're they just they're complicit in their own downfall they probably do see it but they think they'll you know have a shot i guess or as long as they can punish other women worse than them they yeah they we don't have... care that they're bringing violence on women 
We have people like, like that in the black ultimately. community. We like to call them Tim Scott and Tom Clarence Thomas. Oh, yeah, <laughs> dude, I didn't know he was a virgin. I uh, we no. ain't got time. I, Tim uh, Scott, uh, we ain't. We just, we, we'll uh, say that for another day. Six year old virgin. We I, ain't I, got time, Ty. As for my closing it, thoughts, I just want to uh, uh, add. Is one. he closeted like Lady Lynn's? Is that a South Carolina thing? I don't. I, I think it's more is that Christian, a thing? South Carolina Christo fascist brainwashing thing. No, um, I mean so. I, <laughs> I just want to chip in a little point on on what Ty was alluding to in her closing thoughts. Whatever you wished people were doing in early 1930s Germany, uh, start doing that now. And that concludes this episode of Part of the Insurrection. Unless you were a Nazi. And that concludes this episode of Part of the Insurrection. <laughs>